Welcome to At The Bell with Derek Poppy Rolon. I'm here with two of my closest friends, Mr. Carnell Sims and Rodney Price. We are here to talk about our boxing history together, how we grew up together, and the things we've done along the way with boxing, how boxing contributes to our success in life. What do you got to say about it, Mr. Sims? How you feel today? Hey, man, I feel like an old man now. Yeah. I sit back and look back. We, we started from back in... 76 and my first fight was in 78. Wow, yeah. And here it is, 2021, and I'm still playing around in the gym. And that's how I remember my first fight too, man. 65 pounds, man. My first fight, eight years old, 65 pounds, wow. What about you, Rodney? Oh, I feel great, man. Um, I remember the first day I walked, stepped into the gym, man. Uh, time sure do fly, man. And boxing was great to me, and you know, I feel great. Yeah, it was, it was a wonderful sport to kind of get into it. At just such a young age, it kind of contributed to a lot of successes and things we've done in our life, man. I, I was really happy and blessed to be one of those guys to, to make it out, you know? Yeah. What do you think, Stan? What do you think, when was your uh, success? How did boxing play a role in your life? Well, I mean, I've done a lot of things, seen a lot of places that I normally probably would never have been, went, seen. An experience. Got to travel. Got to travel. Um, I fought some of the greatest fighters that are is today and beat them. <laughs> yeah. What are some of the places you travel to? I've been to England. I've been to Canada. I've been to Scotland, Liverpool. Um, all this through boxing. All, all through boxing, international fighting, national team, and um, undefeated. You wow, know, you're good. You know, you right I now. tell kids, man, you know, boxing was one of the best things that, you know, I got myself into, uh, you know, meeting a lot of people, uh, the stuff that we done, me and you together. Yeah. You know, we started at eight, nine years old, you know. Uh, it was just one of the best things that I ever done. Uh, you know, we traveled all over the world together, sometimes me and you, and, uh, uh, you know, we seen a lot. Yeah, and I think one of the things I liked about the boxing was, like Slim said, man, meeting different people right. and uh, right. and professional people mm -hmm. and world champion right. people and, you know, the casino life and all of the things. And it was a little outstanding thing, fighting close to the Olympics, yes, man, yes. you know, you know. What, um, Slim, what, uh, what was the thing about turning professional when you got to turn professional? What are some of the things you had to kind of deal with when you took it from that amateur thing to the professional level? Well, it wasn't really that much that I had to do different because I was ranked number two in the country at that time. So it was just a matter of um, signing, getting a uh, manager, promoter, and um, trainer, and then being learning how to convert from an amateur into a pro, which most fighters today are not don't know how to do. Mm. A so lot. We, we kind of. I'm um, sorry for that. We you and I both was trained by Clarence Devine, which was good. Clarence Devine, and um, although you started with some Clarence Devine, you also worked with Don Givens, yeah, which is also yeah. good amateur coaches. So we had some good people in the community that was helping us. Uh, become grown men and grow up and be grown, good citizens. They, they played a good part, and I wanted to make sure we said it. Ronnie, what about you, man? Turning professional, and what, what was it like, man, going Turning to the professional? Turning professional, when I, uh, after I turned pro in 90, mm. I think, yeah, 1990, I turned pro. After coming from the Nationals, I was ranked number four in, uh, as an amateur. Mm. And I decided to turn pro, and that, you know, my first pro debut was in Atlantic City, so. Mm. I was happy and then I was ready. I knew I was ready to turn pro. Uh, I had a good pro career, man, you know. Yeah, I, I, my first fight was in Atlantic City as well, you know, so I got to really enjoy some of the life, the Atlantic City, the traveling, the fighting, fighting on the nationals with, with uh, future world champions who, who, you know, became outstanding world known of fighters and we got to experience some times with them and, and got a lot of respect from them. We beat some of them and lost to some of them, but that was really a good good part of our life, you know. What do you think was uh, the biggest, you know, best feeling for you, Sling? What do you think you thought was like a big accomplishment for you? Winning the Nationals. 
Because oh, that was our goal. Yeah, the Nationals <laughs> is a big thing. First was the Golden Gloves, you know, winning the Golden Gloves and then going to the Nationals made the real excitement because you didn't know what to expect then. We yeah. knew there was a lot of fighters. They're the top fighters in the country. And just going there and um, hoping you was in the best of shape. That's right. And it, yeah, it's something that's inside, I think, when you develop into this sport where what happens is it's more of a, of a spirit thing. We you compete on a level well past just normal. You know, you you uh, you have uh, you know top people all over the world, and sometimes you can even beat a fighter that's much better than you because it's something that you develop in a, under you, inside of you, that you can that you just won't quit, and, and you develop that right there. And it's come down to who won it the most or who has the biggest will, you know, to win the Nationals is big. That's and right. that happened That happened to me. First time I went to Nationals in 1982, I think it was. We were together and I fought Darren Allen. Mm. And I got, and he beat me. I won, I think, one fight, second fight, I had a partial, uh, uh, what you call them, a bridge mm -hmm. in my mouth. He hit me with a hook and cracked it. And I felt cold and, I, and the ref stopped it. Cause I could, cause when you bite down your mouthpiece, it gave me a chill. Mm -hmm. And after that year there, watching those guys, we had maybe 60 something fights. They had hundreds of fights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, they, these guys fighting on TV constantly with the US team. And I said, you know what? These guys ain't supermen. <laughs> I said, the next year I come down, I'm gonna wipe through these jokers. And sure enough, I went back home and got, went to the drawing board, started training, won the, won the gloves that year, came on back down, mm -hmm. and started wiping these jokers out. That's when I fought Tom, I fought Kevin Laird from, from oh, Detroit. I Kevin Laird, yeah. I, I stopped Kevin, Kevin Laird. Laird in one round. Yeah, he was a good fighter. Very yes, good yes fighter. he was. Him and I fought in Sweden together. He was a real good fighter. And I fought Thomas Tate. He wind up becoming a, um, what was it, WBC, a WBA mm -hmm. champion. I stopped him in the second round. Mm -hmm. And they was trying to say, who is this tall kid? It's Coach Ham from uh, Washington. <laughs> oh, I remember Ham. Coach would call Ham. And he did up there and said, yo, who this tall kid up there BC, going to yeah. body like that? You know? Mm -hmm. And, um, that's where you got the name Hitman, Hitman from, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And listen, after Hitman. that, I wind up fighting Ronnie Essett, and that's when I, I lost in the semifinals to Ronnie Essett. I and, remember uh, that. I remember that. That was in. And from uh, that day on, I said, you know what? I'm I'm the top. Mm -hmm. And I came back home that year and went back into it that that summer of the Olympics after they picked the Olympic team mm -hmm. because they stopped the fight with me and Ronnie disqualified me because the headgear kept coming off. So they gave me a 30 day suspension. So I wasn't able to go to the Olympic training camp. Oh, yeah. That was the year of the Olympics because yeah. I was ranked number four. So I was able to go. Mm -hmm. But because I got stopped, I had 30 day suspension. So being I wasn't able to go, that summer when everybody was in um, Los Angeles fighting, we wind up having the um, Ohio State Fair. Oh, I and I wind up fighting that and matter actually you were there and we fought together and that's when Tyson knocked out Jeff Golf. I was there mm. for the 83. And I won that tournament and actually Tyson won it, you won it, I mean and did a good yeah, thing and that yeah. gave me my ranking of um, being two in the country and from there I turned pro. Yeah, yeah, I remember that it was some good experience. That Ohio State Fair was a really good tournament man, I used to like to go that. Yeah, they used to have uh, it every year. Yeah, I like that. I went, I went with uh, my first time in Ohio State. I went with the Plainfield. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. John Davenport took us over yes, there. Sir. He was a good coach. Got it. My, my love out to him. And um, the next year, I went with Eddie Mad Dog Johnson. Johnson. Eddie Mad Dog. Yes, Mad Dog yeah. took me to Ohio the next one. That was an awesome little trip, man. I like these guys. These guys contributed a lot of things to us, man. And yes, we, yes, they did. We got to, you know. Continue what we're doing, doing giving back, it, give back. it back to the other kids, yeah, you know, yeah. give it back to the kids, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what was your biggest accomplishment, Rodney? What was the biggest moment you felt, man? Wow. You felt good and happy about Mine it? Mine was in uh, 89, because I turned pro in 90. Mm -hmm. I said this was my last year and I'm turning pro. I won the 
you know, get on the site for the USA team. Yeah. I went, I won the glove, I went to the Nationals, did excellent in the Nationals, and got a chance to fight on the USA team, traveling with them, and fighting in the uh, Olympic Festival. You remember that? Right? I do remember that. Wow, that, that, was, too. that was so exciting, man. Yeah, uh, that's, that's really just, the same as the Olympics, Olympics just man. a different year. The, yeah. The Olympic Festival is right. like the Olympics, you know. The open ceremony yeah. was great. Yeah. I mean, I, I sit and I used to tell kids how, how, how it was. That was so excited for mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. a kid from Elizabeth, experiencing this and open ceremony and uh, Bob Hope is right here. <laughs> President Reagan is right here right. from us. Wow. And wow. Flo Jo, she lit the torch for us. I remember for us. that, yeah, It yeah, was amazing. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. I said that was one of the most um, special things, uh, you know, of my boxing career, wow. you know, to experience that. And coming out with a bronze medal after the tournament oh, was, 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 was so great, you know. So, you know, I mean, you know, we, had a good, we had a good time good. in, you know, the amateurs, man. That was good. I'm glad you bring that up because yeah. you kind of make me think about, you know, the other athletes and the different sports yeah. that even then you meet and you right. just meet people from all over the world. Right. You exchange yeah. And some of them you be friends with forever. Yes, yes. And yes. I remember Kevin Lear. You talk about mm -hmm. Kevin Lear. He, he was my roommate in Sweden. He was a really nice guy, you know. Yeah. You know, so many guys that, that fought on the professional that was up there was real close with me, real good friends with us, yes. you know. So, so about leaving the amateur, we have such a good thing and now we turn professional. And you know, it's what they say, they told you a long time ago, they say when you're, when you're in these sports that, that there's a small percentage that actually really make a lot of money and really make it to the top, right? So since, if, what do you suspect, like, what was we plan? What was your plans if you didn't make it? Or did you not think about plans after boxing? We, uh, I didn't think about that. No. I was on top of the world, mm -hmm. number two coming yes. out of the amateurs. I mean, you couldn't tell me nothing. I mean, we, when, you, when the public looked at us, public, right. public held us up high. So, you know, you, you was, it was like you couldn't lose. So, yeah. you know. When I had it, well. I want to be heavyweight champion of the world, so I didn't look at, you know, after boxing. You know what I'm saying? This absolutely. was what I wanted to do, and, and you know, absolutely. I can feel know, both yeah. what you're saying is so true. Like, you know, you like I don't need nothing else. I'm gonna be the world yeah. champ. I'm gonna make a lot of money, and I'm not gonna need anything. That's right. I mean, now reality sets in, though. Yeah, but you know, we was the type that we felt as though, you know, at least me anyway, that I was willing to die for boxing. Mm. You know, if I couldn't box, kill me. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah. You know, because that's how much love I had for it after that, after that time. You figure I had a hundred, well over 150 something fights. Mm -hmm. I had maybe eight losses. I mean, I got called from string bing to <laughs> Hitman. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> from a little thin kid to Till, 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 till I became um, a junior middleweight, you know. And, 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 people, and people respecting you out in the streets, you know. Just mm -hmm. how, like he, he said, Salim said, he got called string, uh, string base, right? <laughs> <laughs> they was calling him. They used to call me back in the day, sorry. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, how they look at me now, it's like, whoa, sorry done grow up, grew yeah, up right, now, right, you know. Okay. He's this, you know, so, you know. Yeah. One of the things that I also like about what Slim said about, he said he was willing to die. It's almost like somebody had told me that when you get to athlete, and this is not just the boxer, but all athletes, that when the career is over, they, 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 they kind of like an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, identity, identity crisis meaning that this is who I am, this is what I am, this is who I am, and, and now I'm not that no more, so what am I? And um, and that identity crisis, you know, sets similar to a lot of ID, a lot of... Um, all sports, not right, just right. boxers. So, right. so, you have anything with that, Ron? Anything you had to deal with, 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 like, what am I going to do now when it's over? No, no, no. Honestly, no. I mean, I was happy with my career. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, after I turned pro, I, I was happy with it. And you know, once it was for me, mm -hmm. once it was over, you know, I, I, I was done. I, I was happy. You know what I'm saying? What ended your career? Medical. Medical? Yes, medical reasons. Okay, okay, uh, okay. That I had to give it up. Um, okay, okay. I, I finished my career, career with a 10 and 2 record. Okay. Um, you know, I just had to give it up. 
Okay. But okay. Um, it, you know, I was still working. You know, I had a job. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I had a good lady behind behind me. You okay. know, so you know. That always makes a difference. Yeah, they say, yeah. right? That always makes. But a I difference. was just happy with, with my career, you know, and now still being able to give back to what we was taught. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm 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 satisfied. Well, I was you dead, know, man. I, I was and, dead. And I'm sorry. I cut you off. Uh -huh. I remember an article uh, somebody they wrote about me. It is it's crazy, and it's it, it was like um, Rodney Price. Is he's a champion outside of the ring? You know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. So you know, I mean, I remember that. That was I nice, mean, I and was, I remember uh, that when I, when I spoke at your introduction yeah, to the Hall of yeah, Fame, I, man, yeah. it was a big, big thing being introduced and in, inducted into the New Jersey yeah. Boxing Hall of Fame. But I remember your Hall of Fame, <laughs> and I remember when you got when you had to oh, retire, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, I remember that, and I said to myself, and I was six and zero at the time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, when I heard that your career was about over, and I always said, if I could have gave you my eye yeah, at 6 that. and 0, I was right. 6 and 0. I was right. an up and coming heavyweight, you know what uh -huh. I'm saying? I would have gave it to you. I remember that. that you know, because that. I think, you know, you had more uh, uh, drive than I had mm -hmm. in the sport of boxing, really. You mm -hmm. know, you had more drive, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, God. Do, you know, stuff happens to us for a reason, man. I you agree. Know? Yeah. Uh, you know, if I would have been world's champ, making all this money, maybe where my kids would have been, or maybe you know, maybe they would have been I on like drugs or or guns. something like that. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, I, I don't regret, you know. What uh, happened one of the things life. you said that I really, really glad you said it, and it kind of helped me focus a little bit, man. Sometimes we just gotta thank, be thankful yes. for the experiences. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, like you no, know, like we didn't get the, the the all the leverages, but there's a lot of problems that came with that. And That's we look right. back at a lot of fighters that that even made that kind of money that got millions and millions of dollars, and now they're broke still because of management problems. And yeah. now you got most of them, you know, are, are talking slow or mm -hmm. talking with a slur yeah. and. Um, are nowhere now, whereas we use we were beneficial from the boxing. So boxing helped yeah, us yeah. able to stay focused and finish school or mm. get a job and focus and, and be a good good person. Yeah. That's what I like yeah. about the boxing. It helped and, me be a better person. And I believe that because um, even with boxing, I mean, when when I had a detached retina and I went to a state of depression, and it lasted about two years up until that point to where. I start coming back to the gym, training pop, mm -hmm. training you, and um, and kind of you going out ready to turn pro at that time, and they scouted Tommy, my trainer, to, to be your trainer, and he came and looked at you, and you know, and at that time he was curious of how did you learn what you learned, but he didn't know me and you was always together every day, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and at that point, he was like, who taught you that? And you said, um, Slim. He said, Slim, oh. And he said, Slim's the one you used to train. And he said, Slim taught you that? How to go to body like that? How to do this? <laughs> and when you told him it was me and he gave me a call, I was so in such a state of depression. I was like, no, Tom, no. I don't, I don't want nothing to do with boxing no more. Mm. You know, and once I did give in and, you know, and tried it out, it seemed like I became greater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, passing you know, on then, the knowledge. They yeah, I became greater than what I was when I was, when I was fighting. Right, so, right. you know, and I think it was because we, we built character. Mm, yeah, and that's, and that's you know, we gained the knowledge. thing about the sport, I think, you know, it's such a respectable that's sport right. that you get respect just going in there, that's you right. know? And, and, and you know, I got the toughest fight in there and trying to kill each other for, for the nine minutes that we're in there fighting. Mm -hmm. But when the nine minutes is over, he like my brother. That's we can right. hug Absolutely. and what's up, man? Yes. What's going on? So, and I like that about the about the athletics and the competition gives you character. I like that a lot. <laughs> the funny part about it all now is that I'm out running, training and coming in and Joker's still like, yo, 
when the next time you fight? Yeah, I yeah. said, man, the I said, I said, <laughs> it's been 30 years it's, since it, I fought. It's crazy, man. I heard that when the next time you fighting until I was like, probably 30 something years. <laughs> I'm like, what? 30, 30 something years, when you fighting? Are you still fighting, huh? Nah, huh, that's it for me, buddy. Yeah, that's it's that crazy. I get it either, man. Said, I get it. And you still fighting, you still fighting. Nah, man, nah, man. But, but Slim touched on something that I want to do about giving it back. And, um, you know, and it does something to you, you know. And for me, it helped mm. me um, kind of like, I like to say my heart start beating again. You know, I get mm. in the gym and I can smell the air. And then being able to touch a young guy or a young girl and teach them how to hold their hands, how to hold their feet, it's how to eat, keep right. going, man. Yeah, it kind of gives you like, 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 kind of like Rocky said to in the movie to his son, you know, kind of like being born again, you know. It, it's kind of like so, and and, uh, and then being a being a substance abuse counselor and uh, going to school and working in the prison system helped me know that you keep what you got by giving it away. The mm -hmm. saying that says, you know, you keep what you got by giving it away, mm -hmm. and I like that saying because by me giving them, I'm getting, yes, you know. Yes. I'm getting so, and and three of us with the experience we got and working together with these That's kids, right. you know, they got three amateur champions and professional fighters, all with experience working with, with them. I don't with, know of any with, young no. guys that have that career, yeah. people mm -hmm. that actually been because today's coaches now I haven't seen too many of them in the ring, right, right, no. ever. No. So we got coaches that's in the ring and training fighters, and they don't know what it feels yeah, like right. to be here. You even be here, yeah. you know. Yeah. So when you see a fighter in the ring, that's why it makes it so hard when you watch fight kids sparring, and a kid get hit with a good shot. We know what it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. And we say, yo, yo, maybe we're to stop it. Mm -hmm. The trainer said, no, put your hands up, man, put your hands up. And we be like, yo, man, this kid is hurt. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 and he it, said, nah, he, alright. I said, bro, yeah, he don't, stop don't, it, stop yeah. it, man. Let him get a break. It's crazy. Why? Because we've been hit with that shot. It's crazy, man. And we know what it's like. It's crazy because you know now that I ref the amateurs, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, yeah, that's right. That's you right. know, me, especially when I first started reffing, uh, reffing amateurs, uh, me being a form a fighter, when a guy get hit, my mind saying, oh, he's good, you know, yeah. because, you know, he's, he's a fighter, but we gotta be, I gotta be careful, because even though I know he's good from that hit, I gotta make, you know, stop it and give him a count, because it's, it's, it's pretty hard for me, right, for you, you right. know, yeah. reffing and knowing if a guy's really hurt or not, you, you know, know what I'm saying, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. he might get hit with a shot, and, you know, the shot ain't hard, and I know the boxer who got hit, no, it's not hard, you know, but I got to, you know. Give him an eight count. I have yeah, to, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. it's, it's really you got the crowd arguing with yeah, you. Like, what are yeah. you doing? That wasn't necessary. Right, He's okay. But right. well, you never know. And yeah, that's you, a good point, too. Know, so. But these trainers today and, and these fighters today, they don't seem like the ones that, like, we had, that mm -hmm. we grew up with, we put up to it. And I find myself sometimes, I got to be honest with you, like, sometimes I find myself, like, being too soft on them, man. I, I you know. I would tell some of my fighters, yeah. oh, it's too cold to rain. It's too cold to run yeah. outside. Mm. Or, it's, you know, it's raining outside, so we don't got to run today. Mm. Or that's enough for that. And then I just got to look back. Somebody helped me remind me the other day. Is, you know, you ain't do that when you was training. Right, man. You right. was running with you know, snow up to your knees and mm -hmm. freezing outside. And it could be pouring down rain, and it ain't going to stop you from oh, running. Or oh, so. oh, oh, we go pick our fighters up, man. Yeah. And we take them running. Nobody yeah. picked us up, man. You know? I mean, we used to run six, seven yeah. miles. We used Nobody to run from my house up. to one yeah. acre around the park back. Yeah, right. man. That and was then still serious. go to the gym. Man. Here it is. You got to take yeah. the kids to the park. Right, right. Run them yeah. around and say, "Come on, now it's time to go." <laughs> and then I think a lot of these, a lot of these trainers, they treating, especially when they got good fighters, they treating them like they're pros and yeah. oh, that's a you good know point. stuff like that. You know, they. I mean, okay, you. Back in the day, our fighters didn't treat. I mean, no. trainers. I know no, mine right. didn't treat me like no. I was a pro. I'm, I'm a little. 10, 11, 12 year old kid, you know? Yeah. I mean, they, they baby them, treating them like yeah, they, they, you know? Uh, I, I mean, think a lot yeah, of yeah, lot of yeah. trainers are treating kids like property. Yeah, and, um, oh, that's a good point. And, yeah. and okay. the point is that, is, and the fact is that, you know, when the kid get good, they don't realize that these kids are kids. Mm -hmm. They don't have allegiance to you. Mm -hmm. right. And it's like, if you doing it, like we training, we training the kids to give back. Cause well, we somebody, 
gave us. Absolutely. But we're not looking for nothing out That's of right. it. Right. You understand? But you got some when you wind up raising a kid and he gets real good. And he turns 16. And now by 17, they he's ready to him. turn right. pro. You got top promoters looking at him. And he's thinking of going here and getting a new, and somebody's throwing a new train at him. So these trainers are signing contract with mm -hmm. these kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To try to keep them under their wing. But you can't. You gotta just let them go. And if you did right by them, when they, they turn back. pro, they'll yeah, come back. Right. They yeah. come back. They'll pull you in. It's, 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 it's strange that you say that, you know, because I, I believe that there is a certain level to where, like, if you got from the amateur to the pros, that transact, transition that has to be made, that as an amateur, if you get an amateur coach, and he did a wonderful job with you from the amateurs. amateurs but, I agree. But there is a difference from amateur fighting and professional fighting. And I think that... Having a professional coach is necessary for fighters making that transition. Mm. I mean, if you're lucky enough to have a, a, a amateur coach that fought professional and trained by a professional fighter, I mean, professional trainer, then that maybe he can make yeah. that transition yeah. with you. But there's Agreed. definitely a difference mm -hmm. in um, professional and amateur fighting. And I think what you were saying, a lot of these young fighters are being treated like they're pros and, and, and getting things and, and it could go to your head a little right, bit. Right. It could kind of mess you up, you know. One of the things I like to do is more teach them. I think, I don't know if it was one of you guys said that uh, we teach them, teach them what we got as a man, you know. I like to say, I like to talk to say that champion mentality. I like to talk about it to the young kids about it being respectable, being honorable, you know, talking right, dealing right. Now, if you're lucky enough to make it to the to the world title and make millions of dollars, great. But most important to me is having a champion mentality. How you talk to people and how the you respect you give, yeah, yeah. how you carry yourself. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, that, I'm that, happy about that. that and that, that comes from trainers teaching them that. You know, I have, mm -hmm. a, a, like, I respect my, may he rest in peace. He was my father, mm -hmm. trainer, Don yeah. Givens. I mean, right, right. you know, he taught me all that, you know, how to carry myself inside the ring and outside the ring, Absolutely. you know. I mean, he taught me how to, you know, carry myself. To this day, I mean, I still carry myself. I'm quite sure y'all do too, Absolutely. you Absolutely. know. I still carry myself a certain way outside the street because people look at us and, you know, People may look at us and still remember what we've done and, and give us so much respect, you know. So I, I try to keep, you know, carrying myself in a boxers or free celebrity way. You but, understand right. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. because these people around here, that's, that's how they treat us, you know right. what I'm saying? It's kind of so, funny because... I do the same. Yeah, it keeps yeah. it kind of helped keep me straight. Yeah, yeah. It kind of kept me on a path, you know, because of that. Yeah. You yeah. know. But um, all right, before we end, man, I enjoyed you guys today. This was an awesome we meeting. Enjoyed for you, you brother. But there's one more thing I wanted to talk about. I wanted to mention about is uh in terms of what we're doing and um when, when you're helping with the kids and, and when you you're training them now, um most important thing that we can give the youth. What do you think is the most important thing we can give them in terms of uh, what do they need? Well, to me, for me, I mean, we train them as fighters, but to me, I, I, I think worldly needs is more, is important, which will help guide them in the boxing field, which is um, respect, self-respect, mm -hmm. and built character. And because everybody's not going to be a champion. That's right. Absolutely. And there's Absolutely. life after this. And, 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 and confidence, too. You know, you see the little kids up here that we, mm, we that's work right. out. That's we awesome. have a kid here now that we work out. We know that this kid ain't going to be an amateur fighter, a professional fighter, but he got that confidence. He ran, he runs, he work out hard with us and everything, you know. So, I just built that character. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, we hit here to... You know, help them and teach them, and if maybe they need to talk to us, who knows? You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, um, That's a great point. I, well, I, I want to thank know. both of you guys. I really enjoyed it. Both of you guys were able to give a lot of good feedback and the things that we need to uh, continue doing to the youth here. And um, I thank you. And I love you. And we enjoyed thank being you, here. Thank you, bro. Yes, sir. All right. Slam.